Between school, your friends, and social media, answers are everywhere. But where can you find the truth? Welcome to the Well Student Cast. We're asking for a friend so you don't have to. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Well Student Cast. My name is Kao, and I'm here with my friend, Michael. What's up? How's it going? And we're here with a special guest. Hey, guys, it's Rosa. Woo! Rosa. As you know, um, Bryn is not here. She is no longer with us in the state of California. Yeah, <laughs> she's not dead, Michael. <laughs> um, she's not here. She is out on vacation, hanging out in the beautiful state of Tennessee. And so, um, with that being said, we have some two awesome people here uh, replacing her, but not uh, literally. She will be joining us later at another time. But speaking of trips, she's in Tennessee. We all just got back from a trip recently. We did. Not the same trip. Yeah, not the same trip. Rosa, where did you come from? I I was actually in Cambodia at the beginning of the year. So yeah. Yeah. Went there for 10 days, did an exposure trip with the church. And so it was cool. Never been to that country. And Okay, so like for our audience, mm-hmm. I'm, this is not the question, but yeah. like for our audience, where is Cambodia? I'm asking Thank for a friend. Thank you for asking. Yeah, he's asking for me. <laughs> I'm the friend. <laughs> Cambodia is in Asia. Oh. So it's, if you know where Thailand is, yes. Japan, it's in that area. Oh, okay. So nice. it's actually neighbors gotcha. to Thailand. That's so. what I would have guessed, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I failed geography. Oh, okay. Well, I actually didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Did you like try any cool food or anything? Um, I mean, I would love to say yes. Yeah. I didn't because I've been to Thailand, so I've been in Asian oh. country before. But it's I like mean, normal now. It's kind of is, but their food is amazing. Yeah. Like mm. it's so good. We had pad Thai there. Oh wow. We had speaking my language. I know. I love it. I we totally had, know what that is. Yeah. It's noodles. It is noodles. It's Thank good. <laughs> their seafood was amazing. And oh, so it was just is. fresh and everything. So awesome. it was good. We're actually really good coffee as well. So no way. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. That's yeah. awesome. Michael, where'd you, you said you were on a trip too? Where'd you go? I was just in Hawaii. Oh my gosh. You were telling us earlier that you were on track to go to Hawaii every month. Yes, I am on track to go to Hawaii every month this year. Went yeah. January, went February. I'm not going to be going for the rest of the year, though. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh wait, what's happening? It was a short track. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I mean, it was fun. You know, it was a great time. That's awesome. Did you get to try any cool foods too? Like Rose tried some foods. Did okay, you try any? what's funny is he's asking me these things, but like he knows that. Like I tried yeah, but all these I don't know these. Yeah, Rose has. I want to know. Yeah. I tried. Uh, what was it? Spamasubi. Nice. And which is like yeah, it's just spam, spam sushi. sushi. Yeah. Um, it was it was decent. Yeah, he didn't yeah. like the seaweed. I don't yeah. like the seaweed. Oh, see, I don't like the spam. Nice. Mm. Fried spam is a different thing. It's is pretty it? yummy. It's okay. better than not fried spam. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by spam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We tried to. Uh, oh, was it, was it Manapua? Manapua. Manapua. Yeah. Mm, that stuff was good. That's pretty. What yummy. is it? It's like a Hawaiian beer rock, essentially. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's pretty yummy. Delicious. Yeah. yeah I'm a big it. fan of beer rocks. So. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I also went there too. Hawaii is super fun. I'm from there. It was a great time and it was a blast. But, and that just kind of reminded me of like that question that we've had from our friends that said, hey, like, um, and you kind of hit it too, Rose. You said that you went to Cambodia on an exposure trip. Mm-hmm. But our question from our friends are, is, says, um, why do we still go, oh wait, why do we still go on mission trips if there's technology now? Um, I'm guessing the, the the our friends here are just saying like okay like since technology is kind of everywhere mm. um, and like we're spreading the gospel that way why do we still need to travel uh, and be like in person and spreading the gospel um, and they said mission trips mm-hmm. and so I think that's different yeah, right because you went on an exposure trip that's not the same thing yes right? not the same I don't thing know. what is it is it or is it the same what so the way trip? the way that we define mission trips is we call them exposure trips because the goal is that. We are exposing people to what God is doing in other countries through other organizations. Okay. okay. So you're not going and like having, um, like committing your whole life. You know, you're not going for like two years. You're literally going for anywhere from one week to two weeks. And you're just being exposed to what God is doing in those places. Well, that makes sense. So if I was going on a mission trip, it's more like long term, like. Okay. Some people it is. Some mm-hmm. people it's mission. It's going on because you're going on a mission for a purpose and a reason. Okay. So you have a set goal where maybe it's building a house or it's feeding homeless or it's, you know, you know, holding babies in orphanage. Mm-hmm. For us, it's like we are just exposing them to the organizations that we already partner with. Gotcha. So we want them to be aware of like, hey, we're going to send people to DR this summer. Mm-hmm. Great. Go and see what DR is doing there. And maybe God's calling you long term. Maybe he's not. But at least you're being exposed to what God's doing in other places. Gotcha. So I went on a missions trip is what it's called mm-hmm. when I was in high school to Guatemala. And we were mm-hmm. there for two weeks. And mm-hmm. we just kind of like like hopped in and like joined what was already going on there. So yeah. essentially like it was really an exposure trip. Yeah. I was just getting exposed to what's already happening. There. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. This makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that semantic change. I think 
I think overall, I think even growing up too, I remember us calling it a mission trip mm-hmm. when we went to Egypt or we went to Morocco and yeah. it was like, yeah, we're on mission to go mm-hmm. do something. Mm-hmm. But I like that we call it here at the well an exposure trip because it's mm-hmm. very much what you're saying. We're just really being exposed to what God's doing um, and not necessarily like this like whole like white savior mentality that yeah. goes around. Like, because you talk about too, like sometimes hurt, help can hurt. Yeah, when help yeah. hurts. Yeah, the book. Yeah, I've read. heard of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you want to expand a little bit more on that? Yeah, sometimes we have great like intentions and goals of going overseas and wanting to like serve and help those who are in need, right? Who are mm-hmm. less fortunate than us. But sometimes what we can do is actually hinder the ministry that God's doing or that the church is doing in that area. And so sometimes we can go with good intentions, but actually end up like hurting those who are in need and like enabling them to take their own like um, pride or even their own work to Mm. do their own like ministry, their own goals. Um, And sometimes we'll go in there and say, hey, we know better, so we're going to fix it for you. And instead of it just makes it a huge mess. And so then they become dependent on us as a foreigner for like their needs instead of being dependent on what locally they can get in their neighborhood or even in their own country. So it's like almost like empowering them versus mm-hmm. like just doing things for them. Yeah. Okay. I really like that because it's like, we're almost establishing that, Hey, you have worth yeah. as a human being hundred percent, and we're not just coming in to save yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, right. Like countries have certain ways that they do certain things because it's just the way the country set up. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we as Westerners, you know, as being here in the United States can think of it as like, Oh, well, why don't you just go and buy this? Yeah. Well, for them, they might not be able to have the means to buy it. So instead they do trade jobs or do you this? And so it just takes longer for them to get their like resources, yeah. but it's a way that it's healthy for them to be able to build that relationship within their own community. That's Gosh. really cool. That's sweet. Well, like if so, if they're going on exposure trips and mm-hmm. there's already organizations that are like kind of doing things in those countries and stuff, they're already kind of got their, their like um, stuff together, I guess. Then yeah. like, what's the point in like, students going, what's the point of me going on exposure trip then? Yeah, I think a lot of it is experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I know when I first went on my trip, I was 18 and had been grown up going back and forth to Mexico, Mm -hmm. but never actually went on a exposure trip. Mm -hmm. And so it was cool for me to go and to be out of my normal. Like I didn't have my parents to depend on. I didn't have a cell phone that was working in that country, right? So I was like removed from a lot of like the normal things that I do. And I was just actually be able to sit there and build relationship with the team that I was with, but also just see God in a different way. Yeah. And I think with your original question, right? Sometimes technology replaces that experience and seeing God in a whole new way. And it even just like feeling him and sensing him in our, like our five senses that we have that technology can't do that. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. going overseas and actually like sitting with the poor and hearing their story and seeing how, I mean, they look poor to us, but for them, they have so much joy and they feel so blessed because they know who God is and they depend on them in a different way. Sometimes um, it takes for us to go and to experience that to actually see just how big God is. That's real. Yeah, I think even to that question, I think it's even a limited question. You can mm-hmm. tell that like this person uh, is in like the Western Hemisphere or is mm-hmm. part of like the United States of America, maybe where technology is a little bit more accessible. I think we have to recognize that sometimes we're still on mission. God still calls us to spread the gospel, and there's still some mm-hmm. countries that technology isn't so readily available yeah. that we kind of think it is. So the idea of exposing an exposure trip is like, wow, I get to be out of my bubble mm-hmm. of like, you know like things that are very much just like we take for granted Mm -hmm. and we get put in a place where we actually have to rely on God on being like, all right, Lord, like I'm being stretched. I'm uncomfortable. This is new for me. And yet these are where your people are. Mm -hmm. And I get to be, you know, I have the opportunity to be hands and feet for your kingdom for these people in that place and space. And so I think that's also really cool. Sometimes it's not necessarily what we're doing for them, but what God's doing in us while we're over there serving. You yeah, know? yeah. I remember when I was when I was in Guatemala and like experiencing the actual like culture change and like mm-hmm. how like seeing their church services and stuff was like eye opening for me to see how like um, different people connect with God. And then like um, also one of the like uh, most impactful things was just. Um, with my host family just having dinner with them yeah. and just like getting to interact even though I can't speak Spanish at all. <laughs> so like, yeah. but to be able to see like their, their, their servant hearts and stuff because of like what God has done to them yeah. was so cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Rosa, you've probably been on a lot of trips. Yeah. So like, you know, share with us just like, what's like one, like, I don't know, one moment that's pretty like carved into your mind where it's like, this was an incredible experience. Very similar to what Michael kind of just yeah. shared. Um, I was in my early 20s and I went to Romania for two months. I was teaching and had the summer off and was like, oh, what do I do with my time? So I decided to go overseas for two months. And it was at this point where I've been praying about like, do I go long term, short term? Like, Lord, what are you doing? 
And one night I was sitting there and I didn't know Romanian. I didn't know Hungarian. I just knew Spanish and English, mm-hmm. right? And so I met this gal and she had just um, was like witnessing you know, by Jehovah Witnesses. And so I was just like, oh, it's trying to figure out how to talk to them. Yeah. But she didn't know English. She didn't know, she only knew Hungarian, Romanian, but she had just spent a year in Spain. Oh, so wow. we both knew Spanish. Oh, no way. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And so it was the coolest neat experience because I was like trying to figure like, how do I talk to this girl about Jesus, right? And the fact that we both knew Spanish. And so I just able, was able to share the gospel with her and just like lead her to Christ. And it was wow. just one of the like one of the best moments of my life because like 10 o'clock at night and I'm like in my twenties in another country. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm ever going to use my Spanish here. And yet God was no like, way. this is how you're going to use your Spanish. And so that was like one of the best moments of my life that I think about when I do trips. It's just like, okay, Lord, you can use me in anywhere yeah. in whatever language I already know, even if it's a little bit, you're still going to be faithful to that, to use it to your glory. That's really that's cool. so sick. <laughs> that's incredible. Wow. I like kind of got like goosebumps. That's yeah. like, that's, that's awesome. That reminds me too. Like when I went, so I went to uh, Egypt in like a time when like 2011 kind of just already happened. Mm-hmm. So the Middle East was just like America hated the Middle East. And for, or I understand why. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that like it was unjust or like yeah. there's no cause for it. Um, but then even like the Christian community, we were like, oh, like they're all just going to hell. I think we just like forgot that like they also like mm-hmm. God died for them as well, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Uh, and so I remember like we were all going with just like this animosity and we went to Egypt and um, just like recognizing that one, because there's only 1% Christians yeah. in Egypt and then them worshiping God, um, the same God that we worship in the United States of America. And I was just like, wow, like uh, they, you almost break down a lot of like your own like blinders, mm-hmm. you know, as far as like your own like oh, yeah. opinions of people and recognizing like God's grace and God's kingdom is so much bigger than just like my bubble or where I live or I'm just realizing there's a lot of like stereotypes, like stereotypes I have to wrestle with, like of mm-hmm. like, oh, like you don't deserve Jesus because yeah. of what you've done or anything like that, or your people. Yeah. You know, like we generalize people yeah. a lot, and so I really think exposure trips really help us almost battle some of our own like, mm-hmm. um, I guess restrictions that we have on the gospel mm-hmm. and like how yeah. like it's only for like people who look like me. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I think that's just. I think that's why the technology would like would get get in the way of what mm-hmm. God's doing in us. Yeah. You know. That's real. Yeah. When I went to Guatemala, like one of the things that was super cool was like, well, when I was going, like get, talk about that, like white savior kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I totally brought that with me. And I was like, oh, they're less fortunate, you know, like oh, we're going to go help them and yeah. stuff. And then they get down there and they're just so thankful and so just grateful for what they like have. And then just be worshiping God. So like, like incredibly more passionately <laughs> than what was happening yeah. at like the church I grew up in. Yeah. And so to see that was like, wow, like I'm being moved completely by that. Mm-hmm. It was so cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I want to shift gears for a little bit. So obviously there, the question was essentially just like, okay, like yeah. why do we need to do it? Yeah. And I think we've kind of hit on like kind of why we need to do it, but like what gets in the way, you know, like in your mind, um, friends, like in your, like what gets in the way for students or even just adults to be like, Hey, I know that we're called to make disciples mm-hmm. wherever we're going, Yeah. you know? And sometimes that means it's in our neighborhood, it's in our state, mm-hmm. but also it also means across the world and yeah. across the ocean. Um, but like what gets in the way of that? And maybe c- could you like talk into some of those things? Did you have to face any like, you know, big roadblocks or like, oh, maybe I just can't do it or, yeah. you know, what I'm trying to get out here. Yeah, I think time, right? Um, time is precious for all of us. And we live in a culture where time means like certain, you know, money or mm-hmm. like degrees or like athletic, you know, sports and stuff like that. And so the idea of having to sacrifice two weeks of my summer to go somewhere means no, not working, not getting summer paid, Mm -hmm. right. Not missing practices. Um, it could be, you know, there's my vacation time now that I'm gone. And so a time is usually a big one that goes along with it. And I think finances is another one. People are just afraid to ask for money. And I think biblically, right. Like you think about Paul's missionary journeys and you just see how the churches came alongside him and just uh, supported him and encouraged him to go and continue to do the work that God called him to do. And I think that's the same for us. We have people who are such great givers that you just need to ask them and they would love to give and donate to you. And so I think if you can, you know, think about the long term of like it's two weeks out of my life Mm. right you know I'm going to be 80 something years old and if I say no to this am I ever going to do it again Mm. and so if you can say hey if two weeks is worth the sacrifice for the season of life that I'm in right now then if you can say yes to that then I'm pretty sure God will say yes to you with the finance I've never seen him not come through for somebody who has not put in the work Mm. who is not like try to fundraise send out letters did a bake sale whatever like God always shows up and so 
Yeah, that's real. I appreciate that. Mike, yeah. what about you? Did you experience any like barriers for going or? Um, you know, um, I was always like, oh, I someone else is gonna go. Like, mm-hmm. I'll I'll do work back here. You know, like maybe I'm maybe this is for me. I'm just like, and then those are the, those people that go to the different places. But I think you really miss out um, when you have that mentality. It's like you miss out on seeing um, how different cultures worship the same God. Yeah, and um, that can be really like eye opening. So, mm-hmm. like we talked about. Yeah, I think for me too, it was like probably I just felt unequipped. Mm-hmm. Like I'm too young. Yeah. You know, like there's no, like that's for like the adults yeah. to go yeah. do. Uh, and even now I'm thinking that's for like the <laughs> older people <laughs> to go do. Um, and I think I just, that, that's like a, that's just not good stewardship of myself or a high value of myself yeah. and recognizing that God can use all people. Mm-hmm. And me saying that, it's like, am I, be, am I, do I know better than God, you know, in those moments? And so, um, yeah, I think those are barriers I think we've all hit on. And so what would be one encouragement for it? Like we have, a, there's people who probably don't go to the well, yeah. you know, they go to different churches that probably mission trips are a thing. But yeah. like, what would you say if like a, if a student or a listener who's like, okay, well, I kind of see this, I kind of want to do it, I'm kind of mm-hmm. on the edge. What would you encourage them to like go into it, you know? Yeah, I think find a friend and go. It's always fun when you go with somebody else. Mm. So you and whatever, somebody in your life group, your small group, um, if it's one of your best friends from school or somebody who, you know, is on your team, I say get them to go with you and be like, hey, let's go to Mexico or let's go wherever, you know, the country is that you're going to and just go. Like, I think it's, it's, I've always had fun when I've gone with my friends yeah. and just experience God in a different way. Cause it's fun to hang out with somebody and talk to them and be like, Oh, did you see this? Did you do this? Like, let's talk through that. And so, I mean, ask your church leader, you, your youth pastor, and they should have more information on that. Hopefully if not, yeah. let us know. <laughs> we'll help you out. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. What about you, Michael? Shoot. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> How would you encourage somebody to go if they were interested oh, in going? Right. I got you back. <laughs> I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> I can't recover. <laughs> um yeah, Michael, what is one encouragement that you'd have for our listeners? You know, like for me, I would probably encourage them and just say, hey, look, I think uh, you just want to give God your guess mm-hmm. and kind of let God take care of the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, and all that God's asking you to do is that you should be obedient to what he's asking you to do. Mm-hmm. And that is so that all you're doing is just saying, yes, God, yeah. and trusting that God would take care of the rest. Um, and that would be probably my encouragement because that I remember being on the rooftop in Egypt and my youth pastor just saying, hey, it doesn't matter what God's calling you to do. Just are you just willing to mm-hmm. follow? And I was like, dang, those are bars. And <laughs> uh, I think my answer is yes. And it's been an incredible journey just seeing what God can do in that in that yeah. moment, you know? So Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. If you feel any sort of nudge, just be like, all right, God, is this where you want me to go? Like, if, like even if it's like a tiny little voice in the back mm-hmm. of your head, just like run with it and see like, okay, where is this going to take me? Because, I mean, if there's any, if there's ever a time where you're like, I think God might be calling me to do this something, you're never going to regret it, you yeah. know? And so... That's real. I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys, friends. And uh, yeah, if you have questions about like, hey, like more on more on mission trips or exposure trips or even opportunities in your own churches, I'd say just plug into your body and plug into Mm -hmm. your church um, or we're a resource as well. And so we'd love just to answer your questions. You can DM us. We'd love to like point you in that way. Um, and like always, you can always just like, you know, put those five stars, put a review in, you know, subscribe and follow us because we want <laughs> and we believe that this is a resource for everyone that, you know, won't want them to get in their hands. So yeah. with that being said, we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for joining us and we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Later. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Well Student Cast. As always, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about us. For more information about the Well Student Ministries, visit thewellcommunity.org students. 